Well, hey everybody, welcome to the Hunter's Quest YouTube channel. This is your host, Hunter McWaters. And today I want to run through my setup for this New Mexico muzzleloader elk tag I got in about three or four weeks from now. And this is the first year that New Mexico has gone to no optic for their muzzleloader hunts. Uh, but whether or not you're gonna use an optic or not, if you got a muzzleloader tag in your pocket for this fall, I think this video will be helpful. So let's just jump in. So the first thing I wanna talk about obviously is the muzzleloader itself. I am using this CVA Acura. This is the LRX edition, which just means it has a longer barrel. The other offering from CVA is the MRX, which stands for mountain rifle. You can see the difference here, um, which just makes it a little lighter. Now I will say the MRX, I feel like has a little bit better of a balance as far as the weight distribution. Um, however, with the LRX, you're gonna get arguably a little bit better accuracy and uh, muzzle velocity with the longer barrel. So a few features I really like about the CVA Acura. Um, first, you know, is just the simplicity of the gun. It's a break open breech right here. You can take your breech plug out with no tools. It's a hand, um, hand operated screw right there. The hammer has an ambidextrous little lever here that you can switch sides on that. A few other features I like about this CVA Acura, which are available in the LRX as well as the MRX, is this adjustable cheek piece here. So it's really easy, you just use an Allen key and you can adjust the height of this. It's also got this kind of soft grip finish, which is nice. The whole thing is coated with Cerakote and you have this barrel here is threaded. So you can easily put a muzzle brake on there if you wanna do that. Also, we got a fully floating barrel and it's super easy to take apart for cleaning. You just take off the forend, release that, and there you go. So you can order this rifle in several different variations. Now this one is still drilled and tapped for an optic, but you can get it with a pre-installed rail or even with rings on there. This one is the primitive muzzleloader version. So it comes standard with a Williams gun sight peep sight. However, I went ahead and upgraded to, this is called a Williams gun sight Western precision peep sight. Now the difference there is you're gonna get on the front of the gun, the front sight is a globe style peep sight. And this one has actually a BDC reticle inside and it's easy to change the reticles out. So it has you know, your regular crosshair, then it has a, ha a hash mark for 150 yards and another hash mark for 175. And with my setup, that is pretty accurate and true. Again, that's the Williams Gunsight Western Precision Peep Sight. Uh, definitely recommend it. Um, I've had great success with it so far and it's pretty easy to use. Now, uh, I'm not gonna go super in detail here, but basically with an iron sight, you basically, the rule of thumb is, you wanna move your rear sight in the direction you want your groups to go. So if you're shooting low and you want your groups to go up, you move the sight up. And vice versa, if you want your groups to go down, you move your sight down. So if you wanna get into that, there's more detail to get into, but that's the basic rule of thumb. So as far as this rifle, I plan on setting this one up in the future for hunts here in Virginia or elsewhere where I am allowed to use an optic. And when I do so, I plan on adding this Leupold VX6 HD 3 to 18 by 50. It's an amazing optic and that is a lot of magnification for a muzzleloader, but I like having a lot of magnification. So moving on, arguably as important as the rifle is the combination of propellant and projectile you use. Now, I use Barnes bullets for everything. I use them in my centerfire rifles as well as my muzzleloader. Um, they're amazing, they're one of my best partners. I've had nothing but success with them. Um, so for this setup, I am actually running the Spitfire TEZ. Um, I'm using the 250 grain version and it's a 50 cal. Now I've checked and verified the weight on these things on my scale and um, the standard deviation is very tight. They're very consistent as far as weight goes. Um, you know, solid copper retains its weight, has very good terminal performance, and um, you know, you're not gonna get lead fragments throughout your meat. So um, I highly recommend these Barnes TEZ Spitfire bullets. 
Um, they're excellent and very accurate. Now, if you are shooting a Magnum load, um, which I would consider anything over about 90 grains by weight or 120 grains by volume, you might wanna consider using these Barnes Magnum MZ bullets. And the only difference there is the bullet itself is actually the same. It's just gonna be coming with a Sabo that's designed to uh, retain its shape and not break apart under a higher powder charge. So, however, for me, I'm using just the regular Spitfire TEZs. I've had great luck with them, um, and they're very accurate bullets. So check out Barnes Bullets for anything center fire or muzzle loading. And make sure when you're getting your Barnes Bullets, you pick up one of these aligner tools. Um, some of the bullets they sell come with them, but you may have to also just purchase one. They're very cheap, but this will allow you to screw this onto the end of your ramrod, uh, and when you're seating the bullet onto your powder charge, it will give you consistent, precise seating every time, which will also help with your accuracy. It's pretty important. Grab one of those. Now, as far as powder charge goes, I am using Blackhorn 209. Um, this is excellent stuff if you can get your hands on it. It's just, I used to shoot in my old muzzle loading setup, I used to shoot the, um, the pellets. And I gotta say, this stuff burns much cleaner. It's, it's far easier to clean your rifle after you're done with this as opposed to the pellets or anything else I've used. Um, and it's a very consistent product. So I'm using 85 grains by weight, which leads me to an important topic, which you know I like to do everything I can to be accurate as possible. And the biggest thing with muzzle loading, as with any rifle shooting, is consistency. And you wanna have the same load every time. And so I actually picked up one of these Hornady uh, reloading scales. It's extremely accurate. And I actually have been weighing out my powder charges beforehand. Um, and you know, while going through the process of doing that, I actually realized that some of those, you know, pre-measured tubes are off a bit. Um, so, you know, I highly recommend weighing your powder charges. Um, you know, then lastly, I'm using just a federal premium 209 uh, muzzle loading primer. And so again, I just want to say when you're considering powder charges and testing, make sure to check the specs on your rifle. You do not want to overload your muzzle loader and have it blow up on you. I actually just um, met a guy in Alaska who only has one hand because his muzzle loader exploded on him. Okay, guys, and the last thing, um, you know, cleaning is a big deal with muzzle loaders. Obviously, every time you shoot, you want to clean it when you're done. If you take care of your gear, it's going to take care of you in the field. So after every time I shoot, I thoroughly clean. I also have a procedure at the range, a cleaning procedure, uh, which I was developed at Barnes, honestly, by um, a friends over there in their ballistics department. Uh, but they recommended to me, basically, when you get to the range with a clean gun, you're going to shoot your first two shots. And you know they're great practice shots, but don't count them in your group. They're not shots of record, they're fouling shots, as they would say. And then your next three shots will be your shots of record. So you wanna basically have those two shots to be able to clear out any residual oils or stuff like that and to foul your barrel. And um, so then when you get to the field, obviously, you wanna shoot two shots before you load in that third as your hunting round. Um, that's not the only procedure. You know, maybe not necessarily the best procedure, just whatever you do, make sure you have a procedure and you follow it every time. And it's the same when you go out into the field hunting. So what I do is I'll go out, I'll shoot my first two shots, and then I'll shoot my three shot group, and then I'll clean my barrel only. I don't worry about the breech plug or anything. Um, and basically what I do for that is I'll get some patches, and when I'm in the middle of shooting, I will use this CVA Barrel Blaster Wonder Gel. Okay, they also make some pre-soaked patches, but I don't recommend using those while you're shooting, and I'll tell you why. Um, I've tried it before with the patches at the range, and they're saturated with cleaning solution, uh, but so much so that when you send that thing down the barrel, it actually will drip a little bit of fluid into your breech plug and it'll result in misfires or hang fires. So if you're in the middle of shooting, use this stuff, which is the Barrel Blaster Wonder Gel, and you can put that right on your patches. I usually do about five patches of that 
up and down, flip it up and down, and then I'll do like two dry patches after I shoot my five shot group, then I'll move to the next one. Um, so while we're on that, let's go ahead and just talk about cleaning really quick because it's super important. So for my cleaning procedure, when I'm done shooting, I'll get somewhere safe and clean, usually a table is best. First thing I'll do, I'll remove the breech plug. Now CVA has tons of great cleaning products, um, so they even have kits you can buy that has all the stuff in there, but these are the main things that um, I use every time uh, for cleaning. So the first thing I do is, this is a barrel blaster parts soaker. Barrel blaster parts soaker. It's basically just um, liquid in here with a little basket, and you can pick your bre breech plug out and just drop it in there first thing, so it's kind of soaking in that liquid kind of deteriorating some of that crust and grime off there. Um, while that's soaking, I'll go ahead and, again, I'll show you here, I'll just do here. I'll take my beer breech plug out. Again, no tool needed, which is really nice. I'll soak that guy. I'm not gonna do it now because it's clean. Take your forearm off. Release the barrel, put this to the side. And there you go, you have your barrel and you just clean it. So I, I use the uh, another great tip here is the, the ramrod that comes with your rifle is great for in the field. It's lightweight, it's carbon fiber, uh, it's great. But you know when you're at the range and you're cleaning your gun, you wanna get what's called, I believe this is called a range rod or a range ramrod, something like that. It's basically just a bigger, chunkier ramrod that's made of brass. Um, that one that comes with your rifle for loading in the field is not really designed for cleaning and for multiple uses. It's just, it's, you'll see what I mean, but just trust me, order one of these from CVA It's a range rod um, and it'll make your life way easier. And then obviously you put your cleaning attachment on the end and um, just, just, this is the time when you want to use your pre-soaked, um, pre-soaked quick clean barrel blaster patches or you can use the gel either way and just you know run patches down that thing till it comes back clean uh, then run a few dry patches and then the last step um, which I will do is I will run a rust prevent patch down there um, just to give it a little coating of that and actually not quite the last step I will after my rust prevent I'll run one more dry patch just because um, you don't want to have oils in your barrel when you're shooting so like I said, several, between five and seven of the barrel blaster cleaning patches, uh, a dry patch or two, a rust prevent patch, and then finally like one more dry patch is pretty much my standard. Uh, by that time, my breech plug will be nice and soaked and I'll get it out. And then um, these are some other tools you can get from CVA. It's a breech plug cleaning kit. It comes with this little guy. Um, I'm not sure what you call it, just the breech plug cleaner. And this is like a little drill bit type tool. Um, there's other things you can get, but this is just convenient to get straight from CVA. And, um, and then I'll just you know give my breech plug a good clean. Um, obviously the most important thing is to ensure that the hole is completely clear and you can see daylight through it. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, when you're done, you're gonna wanna to go ahead and put a little bit of this anti-seize stick, again from CVA, right here on the threads of your breech plug. Um, that'll just keep everything from seizing up. You, you know, If you shoot the gun a lot and you don't have that on there, you run the risk of not being able to get your breech plug out next time you want to. So once that's clean, I'll obviously give this area a little clean in here too with some patches. And um, that's pretty much it. And she goes right back together easy peasy. Um, last thing from CVA, which is pretty cool that I would recommend picking up is this easy, I think they call it a quick loader or easy loader. I'm not really sure, but basically it just allows you to have two extra powder charges and bullets right here for quick and easy access. You can, you can pre-measure your powder and put a bullet in there and have two loads ready to go so if you're obviously you're in the field take a shot need a follow-up grab this you can dump your powder bullet in and 
as quickly as possible, be ready to go. It just allows you to have those two extra loads right there handy where you know exactly where they are and you can get to them quickly. So, and lastly, just make sure if you're going out muzzleloader hunting that you're checking your state's regulations because it seems like almost every state is different. Some have regulations on optics, some have regulations on primers, some have regulations on propellant and even uh, your projectile, and it's just different in every state. So please, 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 number one thing, check your state's regulations, make sure you're operating within the law, and then check your, um, your gun manufacturer's specifications to make sure you're operating safely. Those are the biggest things. That is pretty much it. If you guys wanna do a little bit more of a deep dive on like ballistics and bullet choice and all that, I did a podcast with the ballistics guys over at Barnes Bullets. You can check it out on the Hunter's Quest podcast on YouTube or on Apple or Spotify. Um, other than that, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. And we'll see you guys in the next one.